Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Pharmacy Engagement in East Africa um, webinar. If you can just give us a few minutes um, so we can allow people to come into the meeting space and we'll get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, colleagues. We're gonna give folks another two to three minutes to sign in and then we'll get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We're going to give it about two more minutes to allow more folks to sign in, and then I'll be turning it over to um, our moderator, Levi. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the private sector engagement to increase access to contraceptive, contraception pharmacy engagement in East Africa webinar. Um, our esteemed colleague um, and moderator, Levi, will walk us through the session along with um, our esteemed panelist. So Levi, please take it over. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. My name is uh, Levi Onsase. I work with the TCI uh, East Africa, coordinating uh, uh, program activities in the Mombasa and the Kibiti counties of Kenya. So uh, today we are going to uh, discuss about uh, engagement with the private sector to increase access to contraception in East Africa. Before we start, I would like us to uh, 
uh, set uh, some uh, uh, ground uh, rules uh, in that uh, uh, all of us should be able to mute our microphones and uh, uh, please uh, ensure that if you have a question, uh, put it in the chat room and uh, we should be able to respond the, to that at the end of the discussion. And uh, uh, the, the other thing is that we'd like you to let us know where you are uh, listening in from. Uh, uh, tell us about uh, your name, uh, your organization, and the country where you are checking in from. Thank you and uh, welcome. So uh, TCI East Africa has been uh, deepening its efforts to engage the private sector by specifically working with the pharmacies to increase access to contraceptive services. Data shows that uh, young people, both male and female, are going to pharmacies to, for contraceptive methods almost at the same rate as they go to public health facilities in East Africa. Yet the pharmacists have not been equipped to offer effective counseling on contraceptives. Improving the quality of contraceptive services offered uh, at the pharmacies and the drug shops and strengthening linkages between pharmacies and drug shops to public health facilities is a promising strategy to increase access to contraceptives, especially among young people. So this webinar, we will highlight the technical knowledge on how to implement and adapt the strategy. Also get to outline the learnings and the insights from Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda on how we've been able to engage the young people through the pharmacies. So uh, the TCI, uh, TCI envisions where a world where young people, uh, women and men are empowered to live an optimal reproductive life by supporting local governments to rapidly and sustainably scale up proven high impact solutions in reproductive health. Next. So our footprint in East Africa, we work in uh, 41 cities uh, currently. And uh, as you can see that uh, this cuts across uh, Kenya, Uganda and uh, Tanzania. Next. So uh, the situation in East Africa, uh, when it comes to the demographics, uh, as you can see, we have uh, uh, Tanzania leading in terms of uh, the population, uh, followed by Kenya, uh, then Uganda. And when it comes to the uh, young people uh, who are between the ages of 15 to 24, again, Tanzania has the largest share, uh, which is uh, 11.3, uh, about 11.3 million, followed by Kenya and uh, Uganda. And when it comes to the teenage pregnancy rates, you can see that uh, again, uh, Tanzania with the highest population has again the highest uh, percentages of uh, teenage pregnancies, followed by Uganda at uh, 25% and uh, Kenya at 18%, with the unmet need of uh, uh, 23 for Tanzania, uh, 23 for Kenya, and uh, Uganda with the highest at uh, 30%. Next. So uh, meet our presenters for the day. Uh, we have uh, Patrick uh, Waweru Ngatia, uh, who is the chairperson of the Kenya Pharmaceutical Association of uh, the Nairobi chapter. And we also have uh, Grace Mugabe, who is the focal person for results-based financing from Buikwe district in Uganda. So uh, for more information about uh, 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 the presentation today and any other discussions thereafter, please get to email us at uh, tciistafrica.jpaigo.org. I now invite uh, Maureen to take us through the next slides. Thank you, Levi. Um, so why are we actually using pharmacies? Um, according to a study carried out by PMA through the Youth Respondent uh, Data Sampling Survey, um, it was noted that about 30% of the population are actually accessing uh, contraceptive services amongst the young people actually accessing contraceptive services from uh, pharmacies. So um, when we sat down and looked at this, we saw that pharmacies are actually easily accessible, approachable and acceptable to the young people, especially because they're located in urban poor areas where TCI is currently working. Um, approachable because they actually feel that they have points of non-bias uh, when they actually go to the pharmacies and acceptable to them because they're able to access the methods that they want. Um, pharmacies also provide an increased uh, access points for the, for the young people and the community at large because it's actually the first point of uh, treatment, especially in the urban poor areas that we work with. Uh, also, as mentioned earlier, it offers some level of privacy and it's non-judgmental 
um, when young people actually visit these pharmacies, they, they feel that they can be able to better relate to the pharmacist because they can ask them questions and they can have the answers in a non-judgmental way, which is actually why, what they feel when they actually go to public health facilities, although TCI has been working to ensure that uh, service providers have been capacity built. Um, the pharmacies also help in relieving the pressure from the public sector, and this has really been evidenced at this uh, time of COVID because most of the people in the community are actually going to pharmacies to actually access especially contraceptive services. So it has helped to relieve that pressure because most of the people actually felt um, um, did not feel convinced to actually go to the public sector because of the COVID situation or they were actually scared of contracting COVID. Uh, next, please. So when we talk about pharmacies, drug shops, chemists, or uh, another term you'll hear is ADO, what do we actually mean? Um, they're actually small uh, private outlets who offer over-the-counter medicines and supplies for common illnesses within the community. As mentioned earlier, they're actually the first point of contact within the community. And uh, when we approach them, they're actually also located in urban poor areas, which are really convenient for, um, for for the clients who actually want to seek uh, healthcare advice and treatment. And this actually includes contraceptive, as we'll be seeing um, within the uh, presentation as we go ahead. Next, please. Um, so as we're implementing the pharmacy approach, we really had to work within the set uh, guidelines for the different countries in East Africa. And here I'll just give a, a, a brief about um, the various methods that are actually allowable to be offered within the private, uh, private pharmacies within Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. So for condoms and pills, um, the pharmacists uh, within all three countries are actually allowed to cancel and provide. Uh, lactational amenorrhea method uh, in Kenya and Uganda, they are actually, it's actually allowed to cancel and refer the client to a nearby private or a public facility. But in Tanzania, um, they're required to actually refer the client. With regards to the injectable, this includes cyanopress as well. Um, they're allowed to cancel dispense and provide. And uh, at this case, dispense actually means that they're selling it to the client. They can give it to the client over the counter and the client can actually go home with it if it's cyanopress to be able to uh, inject themselves. Or if the pharmacist is not trained to actually provide the method, they can dispense, they can sell it to the client and the client can actually go to a public or a private facility to be able to be injected. However, for Tanzania, um, the client is actually referred to a public or a private facility to actually receive the method. Um, yes. For IUD and implants as well in Kenya, they are allowed to cancel, dispense, and refer clients for insertion to a nearby public or a private facility. In Uganda and Tanzania, uh, the client is just referred to actually receive the service to a nearby public or a private facility. The standard day methods for both Kenya and Uganda, it's uh, the pharmacists are actually allowed to cancel, refer and provide. But in Tanzania, again, um, it's actually a referral to a nearby public or private facility. And for all permanent methods, uh, the pharmacists are actually required to refer the client to a nearby public or a private facility to actually get the service. So these are some of the national guidelines that we have um, in the three countries whereby the pharmacists, with the methods that the pharmacists are actually allowed to offer. Next slide, please. So when we're engaging the pharmacists, we actually had a selection criteria, and this cuts across uh, all the East African countries. So we're only working with pharmacists, uh, and these ones were actually also marked with the support of the Ministry of Health. So we were only working with pharmacists that were legally certified according to the national bodies. So in Kenya, we have the pharmaceutical, uh, Pharmacy and Poisons Board, uh, which certifies uh, pharmacists. In Uganda, we have the National Drug Associ Agency that certifies the pharmacists. And in Tanzania, it's through the Ministry of Health. And then the pharmacies already had to be offering reproductive health services. So as TCI was coming in, we were coming in to capacity build them to be able to offer quality services uh, within services that they were already offering in the facility, but offering them in a more um, in capacity building them to have quality services for, especially for the young people. Then the pharmacies had to be located in an easily accessible location with a high volume clientele and located in urban poor areas, which is our target population when we're working. And then we also wanted to be able to access the family planning data and the contraceptive data, the methods that they were actually giving out. So they had to have that willingness, the same way we have a demand, gener a demand generation within the counties that we're working in. We expected them to be able to, free, to be free and open and also share that data with us so that we can be able to track that. And then it had to be operated by a trained uh, medical personnel as stipulated in the national guidelines. At this point, I'd like to, sorry, 
Um, so these are the number of the pharmacies and the drug shops that we are working with um, in Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. So in Kenya in the first year, we actually piloted with 150 pharmacies. And you'll see in our next step that we were able to scale up to other pharmacies uh, in the new financial year. So we we're working in three urban areas, that is Nairobi, Kilifi, and Mombasa. So we worked with 16 in Nairobi, 20 in Kilifi, and 17 in Mombasa. In Tanzania, we, were working, we are working with 330 pharmacists. So that is 58 in Arusha City and Arusha DC, 30 in the Tanga region, 200 in Dar es Salaam, and 50 in Mwanza. In Uganda, which is the newest kid on the block, and they've just started implementing the pharmacy approach, we're working in 30, 39 pharmacies, that is 17 in Boikwe and 22 in Uganga. Um, at this stage, I'd like to introduce Patrick uh, to take over and just share with us the approach that we've taken with them as the Kenya Pharmaceutical Association and how tell us how we have engaged uh, um, KPA and TCI. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you so much, uh, Maureen. Uh, my name is Patrick Wawerungatia. I am the chairman of the Kenya Pharmaceutical Association, Nairobi branch. Uh, I wish to thank you uh, for the collaboration we've had with TCI. I want to read this quote from one of my colleagues, that is uh, Chitechi Amboka, who is in the coastal city of Mombasa. Um, we say that as Kenya Pharmaceutical Association, we have partnered with the Challenge Initiative and Ministry of Health to create capacity among our members to ensure provision of quality services among adolescents and youth. If we tap on the data being collected on young people accessing uh, contraception at pharmacies, we can improve our county family planning indicators. That's a quote from uh, one of my colleagues, that is uh, Chitechi Amboka. Next line. So us, the Kenya Pharmaceutical Association, is an association that has a membership of over 10,000 members of uh, enrolled pharmaceutical technologists. Those are holders of a diploma in pharmacy in the country. Our aim is to offer quality pharmaceutical care through practice of clinical pharmacy in the community what we call also the retail pharmacy, public and uh, private hospitals. And it is good to note at this juncture that uh, the health seeking behavior of uh, Kenyans is that uh, over 75% of uh, Kenyans, the first contact with the health facility is in a pharmacy. And therefore we are very critical for the provision of health services and particularly family planning uh, in the country. So uh, working with the local government, that is county, to provide uh, quality, sexual reproductive health services, and documentation uh, of access. And this has actually been so much made possible by the TCI initiative because of the great collaboration that they have ensured that uh, we've got in. Because there's a lot of data that uh, was just afloat, but now it is getting where it belongs. Next slide. Now, this is uh, the pharmacy, Kenya pharmacy strategy. Uh, one, there was uh, an initial meeting with the Kenya Pharmaceutical Association officials to introduce the project. This was between uh, KPA and uh, TCI. And uh, as KPA, we found it uh, a very productive, uh, helpful, and also helpful uh, project for us. And therefore, from there, we, there was an introductory meeting uh, with the county leadership uh, to enhance the collaboration between the private uh, uh, practitioners and the, the county. Then from there, we went ahead with orientation of trainers or trainers uh, using uh, the new reformed, because we currently have a new uh, national policy guideline on uh, uh, family planning and on data. And uh, the trainers of trainers were taken through that. And uh, after they were taken, they, they after learning, uh, there was uh, now the development of what you call the eligibility criteria by the county and the Kenya Pharmaceutical Association for those who 
participated in that project because it was not anybody who was just anybody who was to participate. There was a criteria that uh, was to be used so that we would get the best of it. Uh, then from there, we went to the orientation of participating uh, pharmacies by the TOT who were previously trained. And now together with the county, they trained the participating pharmacies and then from there, there was pharmacy uh, staff now started providing the services uh, to, the patient, uh, to, the, to the clients and also the counseling and referral. And may I also say because of the aspect of referral, it has helped a lot in a big way. Uh, initially, the patient would just be told that uh, we don't offer that service and they would not know where to go. But because of this initiative by TCI, now the referral mechanism has been well enhanced and therefore our clients are benefiting in a great way because now they know where to go. Then uh, Kenya Pharmaceutical Association also started uh, participating in uh, project implementation team meetings that are done by the county, that is for report and feedback and also plan for supervision of this project. And uh, uh, from there, there has been continuous uh, advocacy meetings with the county leadership for inclusion of data into health information system. Because in the real sense, there is a lot of data that is just left hanging uh, from pharmacies that is not uh, provided. But now with this provision, there is a lot of data that now uh, will be captured uh, in the health information system. Thank you, thank you, Patrick. Thank, thank you. you, Patrick, for your presentation. And uh, I would like to ask that uh, um, participants, please uh, put your questions in the chat room. We're going to respond to them after this. Uh, at this point, I would like to invite uh, uh, Albert uh, Buire from uh, Uganda, who will invite uh, Grace Mugabe to take us through the uh, strategy on how uh, they've done it in Uganda. Welcome, Albert, and introduce uh, Grace. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Levis, and to our colleagues who have joined in from different parts of this other world, you're welcome. Albert Will is my name. So uh, for Uganda, our strategy really focuses on increasing access and utilization of contraceptive services for the young people. And we are doing this with the district. So we are putting the district at the center stage. So the local governments are driving the agenda of the private sector engagement. So we have um, at the district level, the district drug inspector who represents the National Drug Authority, who controls and supervises the roles and the functions of the drug shops and pharmacies within the district. So we are working with the district and the district drug inspector to bring the, pharma the drug shops and pharmacies on board. And uh, I want to take this opportunity to invite Grace, who is at the center of this strategy, to share with us what they are doing in, in, in Ikwe and Uganda at large. Grace, you are welcome. Thank you, Albert and team. This is Grace from Buyukwe. Uh, as earlier communicated from Albert, we are, we are looking at the, the Spark strategy in Uganda. And, uh, we are involving the drugs and uh, the drug shops and the pharmacies. And uh, on the point of view where we started from, we started from the section of these drug shops to come on board and we looked on the criteria, how we can put them on board. We first looked at the, the high volume facilities that are offering a high number of from a planning to our young adolescents. And uh, we looked at, at that point, we looked at the facilities that are working in urban centers because that's where we find more of adolescents, like the midwives, the clinicians, and uh, that we can review and probably look under uh, their criteria. We, we worked with the district drug inspector who is the alternative of the national drug inspector at the district level. And we selected them, we, we, we brought them on the board we had a training with them for probably for two days and we rented them on the tools and reporting and how to, to manage some of the side effects. And uh, yeah, 
doing very well in that, in that manner. Uh, do we, we train them. We see their, their outputs and probably at the end of the month, we can aggregate that data and we know how much is contributing from each facility. Um, so when you look at that point, we, are, we, we, we want to strengthen the partnership between the public and, uh, and uh, the private sector. And this is collaboration with the pharmacies and drug shops. This has helped us to, to, have, to have a good relationship because previously the, the privates were working as private and the government were working as private. But at this point, we can come together and discuss issues because when we, we, we set up these drug shops, we even opened up a community of practice where we're using WhatsApp group. Probably any, any drug, drug shop or firm that have, have a client or that needs consultation, we can discuss on the group and give knowledge. Yeah, when we come here, we, we, are, we are doing also capacity building, um, targeting the fine planning and the young adolescents. We are, we are looking at um, giving more skills and knowledge at these drug owners. Mm -hmm. So that they give the quality services to our young adolescents, and uh, we have quality as a district and national and and the country at large. Also, strengthened linkage linkages with public facilities and and uh, private facilities. You find that uh, these private facilities, money, the drug shop have limitations. Some that they are they are methods that they can't offer. And remember, we do counseling, and the the, the client will take informed choice. So they have from the methods that a drug shop can can't offer, so that it can offer, it can be offered at a higher level, maybe at a, a public facility. So we also track the linkage system at from the that point of the drug shop. We know how many how many have been referred and how many have reached the private facilities. So and and that note we also target and much much important to the one to look on the documentation and reporting. Because we have found that um, uh, this gives us the, the clear picture of what's happening in a, in a particular country or a particular district. If much is this, if much is documented and reported, then it will give us a clear picture for budgeting for these facilities in the, in the whole country. And uh, when all this is done, and uh, you have done all the support, support given to these facilities, you have done mentorship to, to these workshops and pharmacies, you have done support supervision to increase the access and utilization of contraceptive methods, including them. The emergency the pills that we are we are we are we, we want to achieve the to, to use as earlier presented you are saying that our teenage pregnancy is high and our animate need is is high so we want to reduce them by using this spark strategy in the country by, by the working with the, the drug drug shops and pharmacies thank you team um next slide Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Grace Mgabi from Uganda. Uh, at this time, I would like yeah. to invite uh, Waziri Njau from uh, Tanzania to take us through this slide and the next slide on the strategy as implemented in uh, Tanzania. Welcome, Waziri. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Levi, uh, and everyone who joined this uh, webinar. Uh, as I was introduced, I'm Waziri Njau. Uh, from uh, uh, Tanzania. Uh, Tanzania, as uh, Maureen uh, just explained, uh, uh, we have our differences and the similarities in some of the methodology. But uh, we started it by engaging uh, the district council, both in Arusha geography uh, city and Arusha district council. So after Introducing this idea, uh, district medical officers and the city medical officers, when they look at their numbers for CPAC, uh, which is comprehensive post-abortion care, uh, they just uh, liked it because they found out most of the youth are the one who are running to the uh, others or drug shops or pharmacies uh, for emergency contraceptive appeals and uh, uterotonic drugs uh, for induced abortions. And at the end of the day, the cost for doing uh, MVA, it's really high at the hospitals and at this, uh, different facilities. And also it becomes like antiseptic abortion. Uh, some of them, they just uh, passed away. 
because of Septi Semir, uh, but uh, it made the district uh, uh, buy in uh, this strategy. So we started by mapping uh, the existing adults and pharmacy around the area. So uh, we come up with this uh, eligibility criteria, which has been uh, presented. Uh, and a lot of them just uh, showed interest uh, to join hands uh, with the uh, TCI in collaboration with the uh, uh, local government. So as uh, we started uh, in Russia, uh, we started with a uh, hundred. 50-50 uh, from uh, different uh, geographies, and uh, they were well uh, oriented uh, on the project. So we work in collaboration with a uh, district pharmacist or DFAM. And uh, this district uh, pharmacist, uh, she the one like uh, representing the Tanzania Pharmacy Council. She's the one who does supportive supervision and she makes sure uh, like the service uh, is of high quality and they reach uh, the targeted group of, of, of youth. So how did she engage uh, all the pharmacies uh, is through orientation of uh, FP national guideline because most of the pharmacies, they did not have uh, uh, enough knowledge on adults and youth uh, friendly services because uh, after this uh, strategy, now they regard it as a FP chap 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 in Swahili means like a quick quick uh, because the youth do not want to stay in a queue for quite a long time and this like uh, reduce the bias uh, from the uh, health providers at the facility level and uh, we just introduced them to the open data kit with the ODK uh, during the orientation period and uh, district uh, pharmacists. Uh, she's also covered uh, on using ODK because she's a member of uh, PIT. And also PIT is a project implementation team. I hope we all understand it. Uh, and also like uh, the chairman of all the others uh, just represent other others and the pharmacy in a PIT meeting, which uh, is held on monthly basis. So right after that, uh, they start uh, the service provision uh, by uh, dispensing some of the short-term method and they're allowed uh, to, to dispense condoms uh, and uh, pills, uh, COCs uh, and uh, POPs. They are not allowed uh, to offer a long-time and permanent method. So they do a lot of referrals uh, and uh, real-time reporting is done. If you see on the dashboard right now, you will see a lot of them, they also report uh, uh, on the referral uh, med. So we see uh, a huge uh, chunk of uh, other re non-registered pharmacies and others requesting uh, for their shop uh, to be added uh, on the uh, dashboard so that they can be able to report on the ODK uh, like right now, I have extra 20 uh, pharmacies, uh, which a new one needs to, uh, to be added in order they can be able to report. For them now, they feel like uh, this, is a, uh, this is a recognition uh, done by the uh, district uh, uh, council, especially on uh, district medical uh, officer uh, unit. Uh, and uh, currently, uh, we have seen in Tanzania uh, they have, uh, they don't want to call it a guideline, but they call it a guide that uh, 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 guide them to offer this service uh, at, the, at the pharmacy level. And uh, each uh, district, uh, district uh, reproductive health coordinator and city reproductive health coordinator. So we have uh, DRSH calls and the CRSH calls. And uh, this one, uh, the one also work closely with the uh, district uh, pharmacist. Uh, and also district pharmacist in collaboration with uh, DRSH call or CRSH call, uh, reproductive health coordinators within the geographies, 
uh, they do on-site visit to provide coaching and ensure quality of service and reporting. As you know that the healthcare providers are the one who get like minister of health special training on FP, family planning. So most of the adult and the pharmacists, uh, they do not have uh, enough training on uh, FP and AY, SRH friendly services. So uh, this is well done. And we see like a periodic data review meetings, which is done at the district level on quarterly basis. Like uh, they just report on the ODK. At the same time, we have seen other integrated uh, uh, services like uh, malaria. Um, yeah, we see malaria program. They just now put uh, the DHS book or HMIS uh, tools at the pharmacy level, apart to after seeing that family planning works well, now they kind of like want to get malaria report as well. So they think that uh, this is a good approach, even for other services, because the adult just sell different kind of uh, medication for different kind of diseases. So now adult, it seems like uh, it's another uh, second unit uh, of the health uh, team. That's why we see malaria and uh, FP reports uh, as being given. And also strengthening uh, HMIS reporting system to incorporate uh, pharmacy data. Because now, apart from being on the ODK, but they are also found on the uh, health uh, management uh, uh, report systems. Uh, there is a continuation coordination meeting, which is done between the council, TCI, and the uh, pharmacies. Uh, because this is a arena or avenue uh, for coaching, mentorship on different kinds uh, of integrated services as well, apart uh, from family planning. So youth now, they are really okay because there was a lot of misuse of uh, emergence contraceptive pills and uh, uterotonic drugs. They are well counseled and guided uh, just uh, to go to the health facility uh, for further uh, services, yeah, which is uh, equivalent to their need, so that we see there is a, a huge uh, number of reduction of uh, unsafe abortions uh, here in uh, Arusha, especially they are reporting for out-of-school youth and uh, youth within the university. They are, they are the good summer customers. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, these approaches uh, brought uh, drug shop owners closer to us. Uh, how, as I, as I have just explained before, in scaling up uh, contraceptive uptake, because emergence contraceptive pills uh, were used uh, as a contraceptive, as a family planning. But uh, now they kind of like understand these are emergence pills. Uh, they are not uh, a part of a long-term or short-term uh, method. Uh, so, this will, uh, I, I mean, just uh, bridge the gap which existed before in terms of uh, health facilities and drug shops. And one of them say, like, I feel so excited uh, to visit pharmacy and mentor them. Most of them knew about emergence pills, such as Postuna 2. Here in Tanzania, Postuna 2 is famous. And a lot of girls, they would say, uh, in my past, I should make sure that I have I have them because I don't know any time can happen. And they would use like a third time or fourth time within a week. Now they are well guided uh, by a pharmacist and uh, get the referral to go to the health facility uh, for more services. Uh, so as contraceptive method and the young one uh, between 15 and 24, uh, we see a lot of them are the ones who are approaching the pharmacy. So by strengthening the contraceptive knowledge and counseling skills uh, of pharmacists, uh, uh, we aim to ensure that uh, anywhere young people go to seek contraceptive services in a city, whether at hospital, public health facility, or uh, now like the pharmacy can learn information that could prevent and plan pregnancy. That was Luz Lao, one of the pharmacy in uh, Arusha. So um, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Waziri, for taking us through the Tanzanian strategy. Uh, at this point, I'd like to invite uh, Maureen to take us through uh, 
how data looks like. Welcome, Maureen. Thank you. Um, Waziri has kept referring to ODK. So ODK is our open data kit, and it's an Android-based tool that we are actually using to collect data. So it actually collects data. Uh, when we were developing the tool, we actually sat down with the Ministry of Health and as well as uh, the pharmacy agencies that we're working with, and we were able to develop a tool which was targeting to the young people so that we could be able to collect data uh, with regards to the age of the clients who are visiting the, sh the, the drug shops, the pharmacies, and the chemists. Uh, the type of method that they were able to take, if they were able to be referred or whatever method they were able to take. Um, so I'll just take us through a few slides on what the current data looks like. Uh, implementation of this uh, project actually began in uh, October of 2019. So we currently have data from October 2019 to October 2020. And as you can see here, um, in the last uh, year, we've been able to reach about 38,000 clients. Um, over 24, uh, the ages over 24 are still the highest number of clients that we've been able to see through the pharmacies. And uh, we have the 15 to 19 and the 20 to 24. So we're able to segregate uh, data through that. And we also have the less than 15 who are able to access um, services from the pharmacies. So we see between 20 to 24, we have about 28%. And then between 15 to 19, we have 5% uh, of the clients. Um, the females are still the highest number of clients who are actually going to the pharmacies to seek uh, reproductive health services at 71%. And we have men at about 29% who are actually able to access these services. The other thing I also need to mention is that once data has been entered into D uh, ODK, we have a platform called the TCI dashboard, which is a data visual visualization uh, tool, which is used for the Ministry of Health to be able to share that data. And this is shared, um, just like Waziri mentioned and Albert, it's shared with the Ministry of Health. In Kenya, we have the program implementation team meetings which sit on a monthly basis. So the members of the association are actually able to sit with the Ministry of Health uh, in that month um, and be able to share how many clients have been reached through the pharmacies. And the, 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 the advocacy that is actually going on now is to see how this data that we actually have uh, from the pharmacies can be able to be entered into the national HIS system so that we can support the indicators that the local governments are actually working towards with regards to reaching women and men of reproductive age within where we are working. Next slide, please. So it was, this slide was very interesting because you also see that men are going to the uh, pharmacies to get access to methods which is beyond condoms, although condoms are still the highest number, a highest percentage of um, method that the men are reaching, but we can still see they're actually going to get the ECs for either their wives or their girlfriends. They're also getting the injectable, which is the cyana press, uh, to be able to take it to the lady at home and they're also accessing pills and they're able to do those purchases. So this was actually quite interesting for us. And we're trying to see how best we can be able to ensure that we have IEC materials and branding that we can have for clients to be able to take away when they go home so that they can actually deal with that. Next slide, please. With regards to the type of services offered in East Africa over the last uh, year, um, we have the ECs still being at the highest. Uh, uh, yeah, the ECs, the emergency contraceptive pills, uh, which are being accessed uh, at the highest of the pharmacies. Then we also have condoms at 28%, and then followed by pills at uh, 25%, then injectables, which also includes cyanopress at 13%, and then we have counseling and referral at 2%. I think when Patrick uh, was speaking, he mentioned about the referral. So this, this is something that we're really trying to be able to establish within the public sector as well, such that uh, a client can be able to go with a referral sheet from the pharmacy to a public facility, and that we can be able to track that effective referral um, for the various methods that they're actually going for. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Maureen. And uh, now uh, looking at uh, sustainability of uh, this model, uh, number one, uh, we would like to continue with the CC Kwa CC coaching, which is uh, basically the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, coaching to uh, which happens amongst the healthcare workers and they get to uh, link them at the outlets and the public health facilities. Number two is about uh, linking uh, to public supply chain systems for contraceptives and the commodities so that uh, uh, the pharmacists and the drug shops can be able to work closely with the uh, drugs and the uh, the supplies agency for commodities and uh, contraceptives. Then uh, uh, the other uh, bit about uh, sustainability is about uh, working within the government systems established for collaboration with the pharmacies 
And this uh, also includes the public-private uh, uh, partnerships to ensure that uh, we get to work together to increase uh, the indicators of the uh, local governments that we are supporting. And uh, uh, number four, uh, we got to enhance documentation and the data use for continued uh, support to pharmacies. And uh, this will also help uh, the uh, local governments to uh, improve their indicators of uh, family planning. Next. So uh, some of the challenges that we've faced uh, over time and how uh, we intend to overcome them uh, is that uh, there's been delayed or no submission of the monthly data into the health management information system or the program management information system. So the health management information system, this is a, a government system where the data uh, uh, is uh, captured into and the program management information uh, system is our program uh, uh, system uh, whereby we get data from the uh, uh, ODK, which is the open data kit. So there's, there have been delays or no submission of this data. And we uh, look forward to continue to do supportive supervision and the mentorship for providers to ensure that they get su to submit their data on a timely manner. Then there's been uh, increased the role to include the reporting and the counseling to the pharmacist on a daily basis. Uh, and you all know that uh, this, uh, when it comes to reporting and counseling, the pharmacists uh, are not uh, used to this. And uh, uh, it's something that uh, they've been, uh, uh, they've not only been involved in uh, dispensing uh, the drugs. So when it comes to uh, having them to report, submit their data, get to do counseling and uh, provide uh, referral and the linkages, uh, it's something that I've gotten some uh, itches, but, uh, we uh, intend to uh, continue with the peer-to-peer uh, -peer coaching, uh, uh, which we locally call CC for CC coaching, to ensure that uh, there is a quality of uh, service that is being uh, provided. There are also plans to continue with the monitoring of uh, qualities of uh, services that is being uh, offered at the pharmacies. Uh, this, uh, 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 we've seen that uh, getting to work uh, closely with the county governments to ensure that uh, they support the pharmacist when it comes to supportive supervision. And uh, this is uh, uh, in line with the Ministry of uh, Health teams. Next slide. So uh, some of the lessons we've learned uh, so far is that uh, engaging the pharmacists and the drug shops enhances access to contraception by young people. And uh, uh, through this, we've seen uh, that uh, they are very much uh, confident and they feel private uh, uh, that they are secure when they go to the pharmacies for uh, access of uh, contraceptives. Uh, and also data reveals that uh, engaging pharmacies and the drug shops has an impact in reducing the gap for service delivery uh, when it comes to facilities. Earlier on, we mentioned that uh, most young people would prefer to get uh, their services at uh, the pharmacy level or the private facilities. Then uh, the other thing we've learned is that uh, there's need for continued uh, capacity for the pharmacy staff. And it's very crucial to ensure that uh, access to contraception by young people uh, is, uh, will be able to continue and will be able to provide the quality services that is uh, needed by the young people, not just uh, drugs, but uh, quality information and services. Then we've also learned that uh, pharmacies and the drug shops catalyze demand for contraception when it comes to the young people, they can be able to uh, go uh, walk in into uh, any pharmacy to get uh, any services of a contraception. So that way then they get to uh, refer their fellow uh, young people for the services. Uh, then uh, the other thing we've learned is that uh, drug shops provide more privacy to young people. Uh, you all know that uh, some uh, uh, pharmacies or uh, drug shops have uh, smaller rooms. Uh, 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 in, within their premises to where they, whereby they can be able to provide their counseling or if they need to provide uh, some, uh, do some procedures, then they can be able to use those uh, uh, private uh, rooms. So this way then it encourages the young people to go for the services at these premises. Then there's been a multi-pronged approach to enhance uh, the public-private uh, partnership uh, and we'll need to strengthen uh, this since uh, uh, we've seen that uh, the young people from uh, the communities where we work, they've been able to go for these services. So uh, there is need to bring together the government uh, facilities or the government agencies with the private uh, entities for uh, 
uh, increase the service provision. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, some of uh, the next steps that we intend uh, to carry out, uh, number one is about uh, scaling up uh, uh, to the new pharmacies. We want uh, to uh, scale, uh, add 100 more uh, facilities in Kenya and also add 50 uh, pharmacies or drug shops in uh, Uganda. So this way then we are uh, doing it uh, uh, step by step to increase uh, access to the young people uh, from most, uh, uh, most of the urban uh, or uh, the urban poor cities. Uh, the other uh, next steps that we intend to do is the support advocacy efforts with the governments uh, for community pharmacists reporting into the national health system. So we, we intend that uh, this data that is uh, being captured at uh, the pharmacy level uh, at the long run will be able to be captured with at the national uh, health management uh, information system. So it will help the governments to uh, make uh, decisions based on the evidence. Uh, uh, again, uh, establish linkages between the National Drug Agency and Pharmaceutical Society of Uganda for collaboration with the uh, drug shops. Uh, Thank you so much. I think you come to the end of uh, our webinar presentation. And uh, at this time, I, I would like us to uh, go straight into the question and answer session. And uh, we've seen a, a number of them that have been raised in the question and answer session. And uh, So uh, uh, going to the question and answer, we have uh, uh, we have a number of uh, questions that have been asked, and uh, I would like to invite uh, the participants to uh, I'll read them, and then the participants can be able to uh, respond. So uh, first of all, I'd like to say that I thank you for the clear and exceedingly informative presentations. Uh, uh, there is a, a question on uh, how uh, the data is being captured from uh, into the system or into the HMIS system. So uh, I would like to uh, ask a question on, uh, could the leader of the Kenya Pharmacy, Pharmaceutical Association describe how he talks with the colleagues who may express opposition to this uh, creative pharmacy strategy? So I, I welcome uh, Patrick to respond to this question. Welcome, Patrick. Uh, thank you so much uh, also for, for that question. Yeah, indeed, it's a very uh, real question uh, because uh, before um, colleagues learn or able to, are able to understand exactly what it entails, there is always that uh, opposition and also there is normally the fear of unknown. And when starting something new, uh, normally there is uh, an opposition that you may get out of it. However, I work with, uh, together with uh, my team of uh, leaders from Nairobi and Mombasa. We also have trained the uh, uh, trainers or trainers, or what we call the TOTs. And those two groups are able directly to talk to our members and they're able to show our members the essence and the importance and the benefit of uh, this project. Number one, there is a collaboration and a cooperation where we are cooperating together with the, the, the county government. That is in terms of uh, uh, the referral services which has been lacking and therefore with that the members have seen the essence of the project and of the program on how there will be a linkage between the private and the public that is the government facilities in better provision of the services number two is uh, in customer relationship because uh, uh, indeed uh, pharmacy is also a trade and also a profession. And uh, when it comes to the power of trade, there is uh, the customer relationship because that client you are attending today, you will need that client as a customer tomorrow. And therefore, by attending that client in a good and a professional way, by having even referral uh, for that client, 
that client is likely to come to your premises even any other time that she or he may need the service and therefore one is able to build a clientele base through that good relationship number three is we have also been talking with them of the future expectation that we have also as an association but we are looking forward also in a way that um, through the collaboration with the government or the county government it will come a time that uh, the farmer the private pharmacies will be able to source or get or be supplied by commodities with commodities from uh, the government uh, facilities it has been happening with the clinics they get their supplies their commodities from uh, government institutions for free they only charge the dispensing fee or administration fee and uh, as a kenya pharmaceutical association and my members you're looking into, into a time that um, we will have that collaboration that we can be able to get commodities from the government and uh, one of the things we will not be able to negotiate for that is because we have not been having the data now having the data will enable us in a very big way uh, be able also to talk uh, on what we need and what is the need of the private sector. And finally is on the youth, uh, because uh, youth we have actually as professionals been overlooking the youth, it is just buy and go. But now with that uh, training, there is better relationship uh, with the young people who also form a major base of our clients and therefore, that is a plus also for us as professionals and as care uh, service uh, providers. And therefore, I would say with that, our members are, are able to be convinced that this is very important for us. This is very important for us today, tomorrow, and the future of the practice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Patrick, uh, for your response, and I hope it's clear to the participants on how it is uh, being uh, done. So uh, we, we had a question on, uh, uh, is this uh, data uh, data by Clarice Okumu? Uh, is the data transferred uh, to the KHIS uh, system? So uh, Maureen can be able to respond to that. Hi, thank you, Clarice, for your question. So currently, data in Kenya from the pharmacies is not being transmitted to the Kenya Health Information System. And that's um, actually the end goal. That's the advocacy that we are carrying out uh, at the moment. Um, in the pharmacies that we are currently working with, we have a pilot currently in Mombasa County, where pharmacies are actually reporting their data to a nearby public health facilities. And it's being recorded uh, as outreach data within the MOH 511. So that's what is uh, ongoing at the moment. But um, there are more engagements at higher levels to see how best we can be able to integrate this data within the KHIS system. And I actually know like next week we have a meeting to actually discuss that. But at the moment it's not entering into the KHIS. Uh, thank you, Maureen. And uh, there was another question by Emily Maringa uh, on how uh, Tanzania and Uganda are able to uh, capture their data into the HMIS. So I would like to invite uh, Albert to take us a few take a few seconds to respond to this. Albert, how do you capture okay. your data? Thank you so much, Levi and Emily, for that wonderful question. So for Uganda, at the moment we 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 provided uh, all the drug shops and pharmacies with the uh, HMI stores. So they captured that data, but uh, we have not yet customized them to the national HIS2. So at the moment, the data gets into our program management system, but we are using that data to advocate. Oh, sorry. Sorry, the noise is just in, of course, I'm near the hotel and it's Okay, I'll, okay, Albert, I, I think uh, we can. Uh... I, I can now, I can say, I can. Uh, so, so, sorry sort of about that. So, what I'm saying is that, so at the moment, we have, uh, we are using this data that is coming to advocate to the national system, uh, the, to the Ministry of Health, to ensure that the drug shops 
can be uh, customized and allowed to report directly to, to DHIS2. So uh, the good thing is that uh, our system now, the new, the new the revised system allows pharmacies and drug shops to report directly. But one, what we want to demonstrate is their consistency and the quality of reporting before we can uh, uh, advocate for them or uh, submit their names to be customized into the national system. Uh, thank you, Albert. Uh, there is a, another question uh, from uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah Bog. Uh, is there any screening or a referral for IPV? Uh, I welcome Waziri to uh, let us know whether this is done, uh, any screening or referral done at the... Uh, thank you, Levi. Uh, as uh, I just said earlier, here in Tanzania, we only provide short-term method and also it has been categorized into two. If you are new client, you cannot get service at the pharmacy or adult level. Then they need uh, to give you a referral to go to a nearby health facility so that uh, you can get the service there because there are a number of medical eligibility uh, criteria that they need uh, to undergo in order to give you service. But uh, if you are, you are a revisit client as well, uh, as I just said earlier, there is no like a screening for a long term or, sh or permanent method because we know that most of the uh, youth who are getting the service are for uh, pills uh, and condoms. You see, which is like most of the time, if you ask them if they are new client uh, for condom or YP, it becomes like uh, really hard. So there is no screening, which like really done at the pharmacy level. Thank you, thank you, Waziri. I can see uh, Anne Faiza's hand is up. I'd like to invite you for a few seconds to ask a question or uh, give a comment. Welcome, Anne. And Faiza, you your mic could be uh, on mute. Sorry, I um, that was a, I was uh, walking around with my phone, so I didn't mean to <laughs> raise my hand. But I appreciate the excellent uh, set of presentations from from the TCI team in East Africa. Congratulate you for an excellent webinar. Thank you, Anne. Thank you so much for uh, your feedback. Uh, I would like us to move to the next uh, question. Uh, uh, there's a question by uh, Sarah uh, Jane. No, no, to the next one. Uh, there's a question from uh, uh, Judith Anyona. Uh, what has been the response for pharmacies to use ODK versus their point of sale data systems? So uh, I would like to invite uh, Patrick to respond to this question. Patrick? Um, thank you so much. Um, one of the things that I've noted uh, um, with my members is that uh, once they are taken through, uh, they understand, to, uh, to understand the uh, ODK in a good way, they really appreciate it. And since it's uh, alive, it's alive, uh, 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 alive uh, it's actually on time, whatever somebody does, and we, um, that has been able to motivate our members in a big way. It's also uh, very simple uh, to use once uh, downloaded and uh, uh, tabulated in the, in the system. So our members have actually uh, liked it than uh, the other system uh, they use. And also by the fact that they are able at the end of it to be able to see the results of what they've done and they are doing, they're able also to uh, check what they have been doing uh, that have really uh, motivated them in appreciating it uh, in a big way. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Patrick, for uh, your response on that uh, question. Uh, there is a question by Zainab at the Anju. Uh, she says that uh, in my country, a number of uh, these family 
Family services are offered free in public health facilities. Were community pharmacies also able to access these free family planning commodities from the Ministry of Health or was it solely privately sourced by the pharmacies? Uh, I'd like to welcome Maureen to respond to this question. Um, so uh, family planning services in Kenya are also free at the public facilities, um, but the pharmacies are actually actually purchased their commodities uh, through different sources. So there is a fee for accessing uh, contraceptive health services um, at the pharmacy level. Um, they are not free, but sometimes um, you'll find women calculating the cost of actually like um, getting out of home, going to the facility, being able to queue for such a long time, and then maybe they're losing business. So when they calculate these costs, they sometimes feel they'd rather just go to the pharmacy. It can take a shorter, a shorter time. Uh, they'll be able to access the contraceptive method that they actually want, and they can go back to their daily hassle. So it's not free, but uh, it's sometimes uh, looking at the cost benefit analysis for them. It, uh, they actually would prefer accessing methods from the uh, private sector, which are pharmacies. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Maureen. And uh, uh, at this point, uh, I would like to say that uh, we are so much pleased for uh, you've been able to join uh, this webinar. Uh, I hope uh, each and every person has uh, learned. And uh, at, at the end of this, we're going to, uh, this uh, webinar has already been recorded and we're going to share uh, the recording with each and every person so that you can be able to follow through in case uh, you missed on and something. And also uh, uh, something that I'd like uh, to let you know, if you have uh, any questions, you can be able to write to us at uh, TCI, uh, Eastafrica uh, at japaigo.org for more uh, clarification. Thank you so much uh, for your participation. And uh, at this point, I'd like to say thank you for your participation.